Hey everyone, just wanted to give a uh, quick update to the last video and in this part three sort of tie up some of the loose ends that I left in the previous video. So before we had this kind of weird math that we were doing to offset the collision meshes and whatnot, um, or the collision shapes rather, and instead of doing that I wanted to be a little bit more dynamic about it and use some origins instead. So I made a few changes to some of the code to fix a couple things. So first off, the collision component uh, for the duck uh, now just is back to just having a radius. And the collision component for the test crate uh, now no longer has a um, any sort of offset property either. It just defines the width and height. So it keeps things nice and simple here. So the changes that I made are all in code. And what some of those changes were is in the shape 2D, I have an origin, which can be defined. And I also have an offset which is now read-only. So this is a calculated value that is then used by the collision component. And so this sort of abstracts some of the things that we need to do to get the, um, the proper offset for the, the collision shape. And so each one of these has its own implementation of what that should be. And so for circle um, 2D, the offset is basically the radius plus the radius plus the origin x, or times the origin x, rather. Um, and then for the y, it's the radius plus the radius times the origin y. And the reason that we're doing that is because it always should be offset by the radius, because if we use our graphic here again, uh, if we have a circle, let me actually just clear this. So if we have a circle, right, and we then have a square that it is attached to, by default, that circle is going to be attached to 0, 0 on the square, which is going to be here. And so let's just say for example, that we, we know that we've set our radius of our, our mesh, um, or our, um, our shape, rather, to be the same as this. And I know this is not to scale, so just sort of disregard that for now. What we're going to need to do is we're going to want to center this circle within this sprite. And so to do that, we're actually going to have to move it inward a little bit. And so in this case, if this was done to scale, we'd wind up with our sprite looking like that, and our circle looking something like that, which is not 100% accurate, but if we, if we make sure to keep the radius at half the width of the circle, it sh or of the of the, the square, rather, um, it should be accurate enough for our purposes. Um, really what we should be doing is moving it by um, by half of this, the width and height of, of this uh, square. So basically, whoops, so basically down by this much and over by this much, which in our case should be the same thing as a radius. Um, and so if your radius matches that, then it will go all the way to the edge and it'll be accurate. If it doesn't, it's going to be smaller and um, offset sort of this way. So it can get messed up if, um, if you don't make those things match. I'm not going to take that into account for now. If you need that sort of functionality, um, there are ways to adjust that using, uh, using the origin. Okay. So for the rectangle 2D, uh, that's it's a much simpler uh, algorithm for that. We basically just have to offset it by the width 
times the origin x, and then negate that, and then do the same for the height times the origin y, and negate it. And that will offset it uh, properly. The one other thing that I want to note is the origin default for circle 2D is 0, whereas the origin default for rectangle 2D is 0 0.5, just because of the, the nature of the way that these things are created. Okay, so another thing that you may have noticed is in here I've commented out this code, and this is because of a bug that I discovered in the actual um, collision detection. So if we have a square, let's say a sprite. The way that we were calculating this before was we were looking at this point, this point, this point, and this point, and seeing if any of those things were in range um, of the radius of the circle. The problem became when you had a circle that was, let's say, Let's try to do this to scale here. So let's say you have a circle that's the same size as this, right? But it's positioned something like this, right? So technically these points are out of the range of the radius of this circle, but it's still overlapping. So I needed to change up the algorithm to look at these edges as opposed to just the points. And it actually wound up simplifying things a lot, uh, and it actually winds up being a quicker um, sort of algorithm that runs. And so what I do is I get the the, diff the difference in the x and the y axis from the edge. And so I basically just figure out um, which edge I need to look at, and then from that uh, get the distance from it. And then I basically say uh, if that distance is, is uh, less than the radius, then I return true, otherwise I return false. So um, this old code can be deleted here. And if we look in circle 2D, it's actually the same thing. It's just from the opposite perspective. So in rectangle 2D, we're calculating against other position x versus this position y, blah, 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 blah. If we look here, this is the almost the same code, but it's the exact opposite um, because we're, we're calculating it from the perspective of the uh, the circle versus the rectangle. So I can delete that other code and if I run this now we get what we expect which is collision. Right? So now our collision is working properly from all sides. Okay. There we go. See? So it's, it's pretty accurate. So great. Um, that's all I wanted to sort of go over in this video. Um, the next videos are going to be um, a little bit delayed simply because uh, I need to plan them out a little bit and make sure that um, they are going to be that everything is going to work out the way that I need it to. And what we're going to be doing going forward is we're actually going to be creating a game. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the type of game that we're going to be creating. And what we're going to be doing is, if you haven't guessed it by, by some of the graphics and whatnot already, is we're going to be making a very simple flappy bird type game. And so um, what that ultimately is, is there are going to be uh, objects coming from the top and the bottom of the screen. So they might look something like you know, this. And then there might be another one that's here and here. And another one is, say, here in here, right? And again, this is not to scale, obviously. And the whole idea is you've got this duck that's flying along. We'll just represent him by that. And gravity is constantly going to be 
applied, so he's constantly going to be falling, except for when you tap the screen, and then he's going to flap up a little bit, and then fall. So he'll fall, 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 tap the screen, he'll pop up, fall, tap the screen, he'll pop up, and all the while he'll be moving forward, right? So the whole idea is you'll be sort of doing this number and trying to flap through these obstacles uh, one at a time and get as many through as many you, as you can without hitting any of these objects here. And these objects we're basically going to have um, three sets of these objects that are going to have random heights on them. So these these offsets here uh, are all going to be random and it will just be an infinite runner so to speak. And so um, that's going to be the the game that we're going to create with this. So like I said, um, the next videos may take a little bit longer to come out uh, than expected. I'm going to try and get them out on time if I can, but if there is a delay, understand that's why. Uh, we are actually going to start creating a game with our engine so that we can see um, sort of the fruits of our labor up to this point. All right, so I know this is kind of a short video, um, quick update for, for today, but uh, know that there is a lot more content coming on this. Yeah, so I hope you guys learned, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.